Hop on! I've prepared a tour around Earth's fellow planets. Let's start with Mercury, the smallest planet in the solar system. During the day, the temperature on the surface of this planet can reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and during the night, it can drop to negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperatures here are so extreme because the planet has no atmosphere. Instead of it, Mercury has a thin exosphere. That's one of the reasons why Mercury is not habitable. The temperatures and solar radiation are too extreme for any organism to survive there. Now let's imagine there's a way to live on Mercury. Then what would life there look like? Mercury's surface resembles that of the moon. Over time, meteorites left lots of marks on it. Unlike the moon's surface, Mercury is grayish brown. Now look up. The sun on Mercury would appear almost three times as large as it does on Earth. The sunlight would be almost seven times brighter. I wonder what type of sunglasses people would wear if we lived there. Can life appear on this planet in the future? Don't get your hopes up, it's very unlikely. Now, how about landing on Venus? You might think the hottest planet in our solar system is Mercury since it's the closest to the sun. But in reality, this title goes to Venus. What is it that makes Venus boil? The biggest reason is its atmosphere. It's made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide. The atmosphere is so thick that it leads to the planet warming up non-stop. Basically, the gases in the atmosphere prevent thermal radiation from leaving Venus. So, the planet simply can't cool down. The water on its surface constantly turns into vapor. If the surface of Venus was food, then its atmosphere would be the microwave. That's why the temperatures in this world can go up to 870 degrees Fahrenheit. What would it be like to live on Venus? On Earth, seasons change because of the planet's tilt, but Venus doesn't experience any significant changes throughout the year. Things are pretty constant at night and during the day too. And what about the view of the sky? The clouds on Venus appear yellow or bright white. They're mostly made of poisonous sulfuric acid, but then why does Venus appear reddish orange when you look at it from Earth? Talking about the true colors of planets can be a tricky business. The hue of a space body might be different when you look at it from another planet. If we traveled all the way to Venus, a reddish brown surface would welcome us. The molecules of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid block sunlight coming into Venus's surface, hence the reddish orange color of the planet. Oh, and did you know that Venus is often called Earth's twin? Both planets are nearly equal in size. Both have relatively young surfaces and thick atmospheres with clouds. Plus, the orbit of Venus is also the closest to Earth. That might raise a question about the possibility of life on Venus. I'm sorry to break the news, but no. Nope. Venus is not habitable. The next destination is Mars. Unlike Venus, Mars has seasons due to the planet's tilt on its axis. It also has a secondary seasonal effect caused by its highly elliptical orbit. The southern hemisphere has colder winters and hotter summers than those in the northern hemisphere. The average temperature on Mars is negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But temperatures can also range from the poles to the equator, and they can change very dramatically within a single week. Still. Not that bad compared to the previous two planets, huh? Is Mars habitable? The number one thing a living organism should worry about here is space radiation. Earth has a magnetic field and a thick atmosphere to protect its surface from radiation. Mars has neither. The planet's gravity is one-third of Earth's. So, weaker gravity and a thinner atmosphere make it harder for any living being to survive on the red planet. In 2013, NASA reported an ancient freshwater lake that could have been a hospitable environment for microbial life. This is evidence now that liquid water once flowed on Mars. This confirmation suggests that Mars could have had the necessary environment to support life. But what happened to the water on Mars? The most popular explanation is that the planet's atmosphere became too thin and cold to keep liquid water on Mars's surface. The disappearance of water might also be related to the loss of early magnetic fields. Or the reason might be the red planet's size. Mars is probably too small to keep water. So for now, Mars is not habitable. But you know scientists keep sending missions to Mars. Maybe they'll find some new information. Let's wait and see. Now Jupiter. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to live on the biggest planet in our solar system? 
Jupiter's environment is an unlikely place to support life. The temperatures on this planet and its composition are too extreme for any organisms to appear there. Jupiter has layers of gas, mostly hydrogen and helium. These gases fill the entire planet. Quite literally, there is no solid surface on the planet. Gases go all the way to the core, below the surface. They become liquid and turn into plasma because the atmospheric pressure there is way more intense than any place on Earth. To put it into perspective, an organism on Jupiter has to resist 1,000 times more atmospheric pressure than it would on Earth. Can a living being survive in such conditions? Unlikely. Jupiter is completely uninhabitable. But hey, have you heard that its moon Europa might be a possible habitable zone? Change of scenery. Saturn. It's the second largest planet in our solar system. Like Jupiter, Saturn is a gas giant ball, mainly consisting of hydrogen and helium. What about temperatures on Saturn? It's freezing. Plus, there are extremely powerful winds there. The winds in Saturn's upper atmosphere reach the speed of 1,600 feet per second. Let's compare them to storms on Earth to have a better understanding. The strongest hurricane ever recorded on Earth was moving at 350 feet per second. So the answer to the question, is there life on Saturn? Seems pretty obvious. Life, as we understand it, doesn't exist there. The next stop is Uranus, one of the largest ice giants. Uranus's atmosphere is dominated by ice, but it's not the only reason that causes the planet's blue color. It's also the methane in the atmosphere. It absorbs red light and reflects blue. The same goes for Neptune. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. The temperatures there can be as low as negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. Life on Earth needs sunlight to get energy, but there's nothing on Uranus that can produce any energy for life forms to thrive. The bottom line is Uranus doesn't have the environment to sustain life. Heading for Neptune, the second ice giant. What is there on the planet furthest from the sun? Obviously, it's incredibly chilly. There's neither a source of energy that bacterial life can exploit, nor a source of liquid water. Currently, scientists believe it's unlikely to find life on Neptune because of such unfriendly conditions. So, what makes our planet so livable? And I'm not just talking about human life, I mean any living organisms, even microbes. Life requires very special conditions to exist. All living beings need some sort of food, water, and the right temperature to develop. The atmosphere is a vital element. Humans, for instance, need oxygen to breathe, and they can only survive in temperatures that aren't extremely hot or cold. Another thing is gravity. All the other planets I've mentioned don't have exactly the same conditions as Earth. Life there would probably be different than what we have here. All living beings on Earth have adapted to our atmosphere, and life forms elsewhere would need to be able to survive in that planet's conditions. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.